Hi, it's Penny here. Welcome to another reading vlog. This week, the main thing that I'm going to be reading is The Bone People by Carrie Holm. This is kind of like a New Zealand classic. I have mostly forgotten the synopsis, so you'll have to wait until I get into it a bit. Uh, but I believe it's something to do with like Maori myth and culture coming together with like Christian myth and culture. Uh, it's got a, like a lot of rave reviews on the back of the book and then I can see that it does start with what looks like a little bit of like poetry styles. It is an older book. Um, I think, what does it say? First published 1983. So this book is almost as old as me, but it's one I've been wanting to read for a while. I am worried that the font is very small um, and I kind of had the idea that I want to read about two chapters a day, which would get me through it in the week. Um, but I put my bookmark in and that looks like a lot for me to read in a day, especially with that font size and especially since it's already four o'clock today. But We'll see how we go. Um, I will of course also be reading an audiobook. The main audiobook I have to read this week is The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. This is another one where am I gonna like it? I'm not sure. So I guess we're doing like books I want to read for certain reasons but I'm not sure about this week. So this one I think it's kind of a historical fiction which is where my concerns come in because I don't tend to like historical fiction but we have a woman who uh, is pregnant and then her baby, unborn baby I think, is like diagnosed with some kind of heart condition and then her husband's brother who's like some kind of physicist says oh maybe there's a solution and it seems like it might have something to do with time travel which I'm a big fan of time travel although uh, most of the historical fiction time travel that I've tried <sighs> hasn't been to my taste because I tend to like like that really twisty time travel stuff. So we're gonna try it though and see how it goes. I don't think the audiobook is too long. 13 and a half hours, so maybe seven hours at two times speed. I should be able to get through it this week but I haven't started either of these yet so um, I guess I'll let you know when I have and when I know more. Hello! So quick update because we are about to go off and see part two of June which should be exciting um, but also I haven't been good at updating or even at reading. It's already Thursday. I don't know. I'm not sure if I just haven't been getting through this because I'm lacking a motivation or am I lacking a motivation because the book isn't everything I would want it to be. Like I guess the thing with this in some ways the writing is beautiful and in some like some parts the characters feel almost magical there's some quite endearing moments and then there's some other bits which kind of really take you out of the story because they're so shocking and I'm not sure how much of that is because this is a book from the early 80s or is it just like kind of messed up I don't know uh, so basically we start with this character named Carolyn Holmes um, the main character's name is Kerry, um, I've now found out you pronounce this like whom, but like the name is almost the same so it seems like the main character is kind of an author insert and then this young boy who's maybe like six-ish turns up at her house and uh, he's mute so he can't speak and she kind of just starts forming this relationship with this young boy even though she doesn't really like children and then also this young boy's like adopted father who I have a lot less interest in or patience for. So like some parts of that relationship building are really lovely and then we also get these bits though. Uh, so there's like one bit where the father is smoking and this young boy, this six-year-old boy, uh, picks up a cigarette and starts smoking as well and the dad's like oh well he doesn't really inhale it so it's not really a problem it just makes him feel like he's doing the same thing as me. And then the the woman, the author insert as far as I can tell, is like oh I'm just glad to see someone dealing with that in such a rational way uh, and the father's like couldn't cause any harm, doesn't do any harm. I don't know is that an early 80s perspective of smoking because that's wrong, awful. And then there's another bit um, like there's quite a lot of alcoholism in this so there's another bit where they drink several bottles of wine with dinner and this six-year-old boy is drinking wine alongside them and seems to be drinking just as much as them. And there's also like quite a bit of uh, just like casual child abuse uh, even though again the main character is kind of saying is that right? 
and questioning it but at the same time it kind of seems accepted I don't know I'm not sure about the message of this also the writing style like as I said sometimes really beautiful uh, it's definitely creative but it switches between like third person and then goes into like internal monologue thoughts and that that stuff is always like indented but it can be thoughts of any character it isn't always the main character and so sometimes you kind of need to figure out from the context like who is who is even thinking this and it's not always clear so mixed feelings about this but i will keep reading it uh, the other thing i did do is yesterday on my run i started the dream daughter is that what it's called so i think i'm about a quarter of the way through it so far it's progressing pretty much exactly as the synopsis said um she found out she was pregnant this is in the 60s, her husband's just died in the war, she finds out she's pregnant and her baby has this heart condition and then her brother-in-law, who she met in slightly strange circumstances, uh, he comes along and says, hey, actually you could time travel to 2001 where there would be a solution. And so now she's time traveled, I did think the way the time travel works is interesting, but also um, I would hate anyone to read this book and think that it might actually work because that could be dangerous but the time travel is kind of interesting in the implementation it's kind of quite simplistic but in an elegant kind of way uh, and then now she's arranging getting this surgery that she needs so it's written very well it's very engaging I'm just waiting for something more exciting to happen or like something unexpected to happen I guess I'm only a quarter of the way through so maybe it will happen i guess we'll find out on my run tomorrow i have bumped this up to three times speed and it's i'm finding it easy to follow along at that speed so i should be able to get through this one pretty quickly actually hello so i think i have decided i am gonna dnf the bone people um i basically i almost got up to halfway last night and i thought i'll just get up to halfway and then i'll update the vlog um but then when i picked it up this morning it was right in the middle of this father who is abusing his child and he was thinking all about abusing his child and feeling really guilty about it but also masturbating and i just I, it feels like it's trying to make me feel sorry for this man who's abusing his child and i can't do it um also last night when i was reading it there's a part where this woman basically discovers that this child has like horrific injuries and instead of like taking him away from this man and getting him like the medical attention that he needs she's like oh well I wouldn't want the experts to come in and start interfering uh so instead I'm just gonna like watch him and if he does it again then I'll do something and honestly just that whole reaction to it was frustrating as hell like there is some interesting elements to this book but the way it's dealing with child abuse just doesn't I don't know maybe it's a 1980s way of dealing with it but it doesn't line up with how I think we should deal with it now and like I read somewhere that she said she wrote this because she wanted to draw attention to how horrible child abuse is and I guess it does but does it really I don't know maybe by the end it comes to the point of like wow this is awful but I just don't want to read about a child being abused so I'm not going to and as well like the writing style I know it won an award but I kind of feel like it's that kind of writing where it's it's right on the boundary of like terrible and creative so like is it creative if you put on that lens or look at it in that perspective maybe you could look at it as it is but you could also look at it and be like no I think it's just bad writing and from the introduction and the way the author talked about it I feel like she came across as quite pretentious and I think maybe she thinks it's more creative than it actually is and isn't really willing to take on any feedback about the ways in which it might just be bad writing. Anyway, the summary is I am done with this. So I'm kind of happy to put that aside. Uh, then as well this morning on my run I did continue the audiobook for The Dream Daughter and I got quite far through it since I'm listening to it on three times speed. Oh I'm listening to it in Borrow Box and it it's almost impossible to work out what percentage you're through on that without doing the maths. Maybe 75% of the way through? So what I will say is it took until about 50% of the way through before it finally deviated from the synopsis on the back of the book and even then I didn't really get interested until about 60% when some of the problems that were introduced in the 10% before that started giving me ideas of the twisty time travel stuff that could happen has any of it happened yet not really is it gonna happen 
I don't know, I don't know if that kind of book. Uh, the first half was mostly just this woman, like tiny bit of time travel, but mostly just this woman experiencing this very traumatic pregnancy and dealing with her unborn baby being really sick and then her newly born baby also being very sick. Um, it, it's just kind of not that enjoyable to read, partly because I'm just not interested in baby making or baby having. But I was also thinking like, I like books that make me feel something, and this book was definitely making me feel something, but I think what it was making me feel was anxiety, and like I got plenty of anxiety in my regular life. I want to feel feelings. When I read, I want to feel feelings that I'm not feeling in my normal life, and so I just didn't really enjoy the way that the book was making me feel. But as I said, from 60% things have kind of gone in a different direction and I am intrigued. I've been trying to put together what could be a happy ending in my head and I think it's hard because now different characters would have different happy endings. And it is really well written. I am very invested in the story. I just, I hope we'll get some more twisty time travel stuff. I hope. I'll definitely finish that on my next run though tomorrow, not tomorrow, Sunday, which I've realized is Easter Sunday, so we'll have a run, we'll have some chocolate. Good combination. The other thing, so since I've decided to DNF the bone people, I've decided I'm gonna pick up some of the Brandon Sanderson uh, Cosmia reread short stories that I need to read, so I can't pick up, the next one on my list is Shadows of Silence in the Forest of Hell, I can't pick that up or any of the other books I have on my current TBR until April properly begins because I put most of them on my Aurelium Readathon TBR. But what I can read is a couple of the short stories that are in Arcane, Arcanum Unbound, Unbounded. Titles are hard. Um, so I'm going to read Elements of Jack in the Pits of Altania as well as Six of Dust. Six of Dust I'm excited to read because I haven't read it before and the new secret project that Brandon Sanderson announced is based or set in the same world as Six, Six of the Dust. I keep calling it Six of Dust. Maybe I'll be better at that once I've read it. Anyway, those are the, the next things I'm going to read, and I'm feeling much more excited about picking those up than I have been about the Bone People, or than I am for the Dream Daughter. I think just because Brandon Sanderson is a known quality, and you know, I took a little detour out of reading fantasy books. I guess you could say the Dream Daughter is like sci-fi fantasy, but like mostly it's historical fiction with like a a little sprinkle of sci-fi in there so my detour into those kind of books just it never works out i don't know why i'm ever surprised when it doesn't work out so we're gonna go back to some fantasy and hopefully have a good weekend with that hi so i'm hoping that you can't hear my neighbors they're being very uh, noisy today uh, but anyway i did remember that i didn't tell you about what we thought of june um i have read i think like the first four june books and then maybe i gave up there's some things i liked about it some things i didn't i did think with the second half of the book that they were going to really struggle to make that into a movie uh, i didn't like the second half of the first book as much because i just felt like it was rushing through things so much um, because it covered such like a large amount of time and compared to the first half of the book it felt like time kind of sped up and they had to skip through things. I think they did a pretty good job of it in the movie even though you could kind of tell in some bits it still felt kind of jumpy but some parts of the film were really beautiful. I don't know about the feasibility of actually writing a giant worm especially in terms of like how do you get off uh, but it it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, my biggest problem with it actually is because it's been a couple of years since I read the books now and it tempted me to go back and reread at least the first one, um, but I don't, I don't think I like them enough to reread it. I think I'm just getting sucked into the hype and I've got way too many other things to read. So what have I read since I last talked to you? Oh, I went for a run and I finished off The Dream Daughter. And I did like in the end some of the things it did with the time travel. I will say I felt like the ending was really rushed and there was one thing that I had guessed really early on was going to happen and it did happen but it was one sentence and so that really uh, took away my satisfaction of being like oh I knew that was going to happen because it only got to be one sentence. That's so lame. Oh and as well right at the very end um I'll try not I'll try to say this without spoiling it. Uh, basically there is a character that I would have expected her 
to track down at a certain point in time. Like when they knew they were in that time, they should have been like, oh, I'll go and track down that character. And they didn't. And that seemed weird to me. And there were also actually a few other things I thought of that could have been going on with the time travel. Like at least one other thing that didn't happen that I think could have been kind of cool. So I guess like I had fun with it. I thought it was really well written. I was definitely emotionally engaged even if sometimes the emotions weren't parts that I really wanted to feel and like the whole first half of the book and still a significant part of the second half are all just about motherhood which isn't exactly a theme that I'm that interested in but it was well written. It was fun. Like I, I had a good time with it. I can see why people like it. I don't know if I quite get why it's their favorite book because why would you want to feel that terrible all the time? And and I didn't think the ending was satisfying enough. Like I almost wish the first half had been compressed a bit and then we'd gotten a little bit more at the end. But it was fun. Anyway, uh, the other thing I read was Six of the Dusk. I'm not sure if I was saying the name correctly before. Uh, Six of the Dusk. So what is it about? It's about uh, another world in the Cosmere and in this world we have this archipelago of islands where uh, only the trappers go and there's these horrible creatures that hunt by um, like tracking people by their their thoughts so they can like detect thoughts uh, but there's also these birds that they can bond with that will then basically mask their thoughts so it's quite an interesting world uh, but then as well there's talk about people having come from other worlds and this seems like some kind of um, bigger cosmere thing happening and just it's a lot of the theme of the book is about this idea of the inevitability of progress um, and the impact that has on traditional ways and like how in some ways it can be a good thing in other ways not and I, I really like the way the theme was dealt with and I also thought the world was really cool but also really dangerous which I liked. Um, it was a really short story which in some ways was dissatisfying because there wasn't more to it however I think I only listened to like a tiny bit of the preview of the new secret project book but I believe that's going to be a continuation of the story. So that should be cool. I think I'm not going to read any more of the secret project preview though because I just want to get the whole story at once. I get frustrated when I only get little bits of stories. Uh, I think as well last time I talked to you I said I was going to pick up Elements of Jack in the Pits of Altania. However, the very beginning of it said that it included spoilers for Alloy of Law, which I have read, but I'm thinking in April. I hadn't planned it, but I might now try and pick up the next book in Mistborn Era 2, and then I might try and read Elements of Jack at the same time just to like get into a mood, put things together. So that was my reading for the week. Um, a little bit of a fail in some ways, but some other enjoyable reads. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books because I would love to chat with you about them down in the comments or let me know if you've been reading anything exciting lately uh, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos. Otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.